Welcome back to the second part of this series. I'm Raj Kletke, and again, I'm hoping this talk will inspire you to learn some basic entomology as related to fly fishing. In the first part of this series, we covered a brief introduction as to why you should learn some entomology, looked briefly at sow bugs and scuds, in spite of the fact that technically they're not insects, so technically aren't part of entomology, and looked briefly at midges, organisms which I feel are way underutilized for trout fishing. So let's continue with caddis today. Caddis adults are the downwing flies that look like little pup tents. I want to spend a little time on them because they're present on most trout streams and their hatches are sometimes very frustrating to fish. I'm sure you're already familiar with caddis cases that you see on rocks. There are many different types of caddis cases and not all caddis make cases. Hundreds of caddis species exist and are commonly subdivided by their larvae into free living, net making or net spinning with a retreat case and a larva that actually lives in its case. In other words, no case, retreat case, and a carry case. Like midges, caddis have a larva, pupa, and adult stage, complete metamorphosis. Incidentally, when a larva pupates, it loses 20 to 30 percent of its size due to the energy requirement of pupation. So a larva is larger than the adult, which you see in the bushes or in spider webs. Caddis larvae commonly get knocked into the current, are poor swimmers, and drift close to the bottom of the stream, so they're excellent searching patterns. Choosing the best caddis larvae to use depends partially on the water type. Rycophilia, the green sedge, is a free-living caddis. It needs highly oxygenated water, so a green rockworm pattern is usually good in fast riffles to rapids, but be sure to get it near the bottom of the stream, which is often hard to do in a fast riffle. Extra weight or even Euro-style nymphing may be needed. Because the current is fast, trout don't have a lot of time to examine your fly, so often an exact imitation is not that necessary. Hydropsyche, the spotted sedge, and closely related caddis are also free-living part of the time. They spin a net to trap food, retreat to a case next to their net, but periodically leave their case to check on their nets and then they get knocked into the drift. They are common in a wide variety of water types and I feel are the most important caddis on most streams most of the time. I fish these a lot. A Ross Miller nymph is a good imitation. Again, along the bottom. It's one of my favorite searching nymphs. Again, technically it's a larva, not a nymph. There are also many granums where I fish. The granums, scientifically brachycentris, live in and carry their cases with them. Their case is easy to identify as it is square in cross-section and made of vegetable matter. Trout eat them case and all. We did pump a trout this past year, although that's not something I commonly do, but it was full of brachycentris, case and all. So I now tie the fly picture, but I haven't tried it yet. Caddis emergences are common, often daily on most trout streams, and many go unrecognized by us fishermen. I've only seen one this obvious in many years of fishing. You should suspect a possible caddis emergence when you see actively rising fish without seeing adult organisms as the adults leave the surface quickly. This is especially true on fairly fast water. Sometimes there may be only a few rising fish or rarely hardly any rising fish, but you may also see very active rise forms even with large fish coming completely out of the water. Incidentally, the swarms of caddis we see flying upstream only mean that only means that caddis are present on that stream. That is not an emergence which many of us mistake it for. If you see swallows swooping around, they're taking something out of the air, and often these will be caddis. Multiple patterns of caddis emergence occur, and we don't have time to cover all of those today, but probably the most common pattern is listed here. Most species will emerge from their pupation cases as technically a ferret adult in a transparent sheath. We call this a pupa. And this occurs on the bottom of the stream where the pupa drifts for a while, then rises to the surface, often with a gas bubble and or swimming, drift there for a short period of time, and then emerge as an adult and quickly fly away. Trout will usually take the easiest meal, 
most numerous, and most vulnerable. The deep pupa is the most concentrated during the pre-emergent period. During the emergence, the subsurface pupa stage is the most concentrated and often the best choice. An emerger stuck on the surface is likely the most vulnerable, so fishing an X caddis may also work. But there's another problem we have to solve. Most of the common caddis dive beneath the surface to lay their eggs on the bottom and then rise, commonly with a gas bubble, back to the surface. Trout may eat these at any level, but the caddis egg layers, again, are concentrated just subsurface, so commonly elicit the same type of rise form you see with emerging caddis. But a diving caddis works best for this. Pre-emergence, emergence, surface egg laying, and diving egg laying not uncommonly happen together. So the problem in fishing what you think is a caddis emergence is figuring out what is actually happening and what stage the trout are keying in on. And unfortunately, sometimes individual trout may key in on different stages, especially on heavily fished waters. To cover the multiple caddis species, you do need the right size. Most are size 14 to 18, but larger and smaller caddis do occur. I usually carry at least green and tan, but color may not be that important. I've experimented changing colors during emergencies, during emergencies with little effect. What about one of my favorite flies, the Elkhair caddis? We haven't mentioned that yet. This is an excellent fly with a well-deserved well reputation, but think of it as an adult egg-laying caddis. Many caddis adults return to lay their eggs multiple times, so are intermittently available to trout. The Elkhair caddis makes an excellent searching dry fly. It may work during a caddis emergence, but is generally not ideal. I've had many refuses to an Elkhair caddis during an emergence, especially with heavily fished trout. If you're not catching anything on your Elkhair caddis during an emergence, switch over. Using the right fly can sometimes be dramatic. Well, let's quickly review how I usually fish caddis. If no hatches are apparent and I want to mainly search with a dry fly, I commonly search with an elk hair caddis in the appropriate size for the season. I often add a zebra midge dropper, as I've explained in the previous video. If I think a caddis emergence is happening, I usually start with an X caddis and a pupa dropper. Although ideally, these flies are fished in a slightly different manner, so I'll remove the least effective one, but sometimes the trout are taking both flies. If no takes, I'll check my fly size. I commonly need to go smaller, but if that doesn't work and I'm still comfortable the trout are taking caddis, I'll try diving caddis, sometimes dead drift, sometimes with a minimal wet fly swing. When you get it right, it often becomes obvious. So I change flies and techniques quickly, often after 10 minutes or less, as long as they are still actively rising fish. Sometimes I do get lazy in changing flies until my partner starts catching lots of fish. Then I ask him what he has on. To see a more in-depth look at caddis, see my Simple Entomology series, part 7, 8, and 9. Join me soon for part 3, when I quickly discuss mayflies and briefly stoneflies. I'm Raj Kletke, and I'll see you soon.